Hello guys, we are back with our next lecture. In this lecture, let us go through loops. So basically what is the main intention or goal for loops is nothing but assume that you want to print. So assume that there is an array in which you are storing some thousand items guys. And there is one more array in which you are storing two items. So assume that you want to print the items. So for printing items in an array, guys we will be discussing about arrays in our next lecture. Just for your understanding, I am saying you how the loops will be helpful. So basically to read an element from an array, you will be writing in this way. So assume the array name is cars, same I am taking this example only cars. So the first element index you will be writing here guys 0, you will be printing it and similarly you will be for second element you will be doing the 1. For 2 elements okay you will be writing 2 lines that's fine. But for 1000 elements will you write 1000 times guys is it a good or good practice to do? No. It's absolutely no right. So this is the reason why the loops came into play. So basically to do a single task repeatedly again and again and again and again we will be using the loops. So loops can execute a block of code a number of times. Loops are handy if you want to run the same code over and over again. So this is what I told you guys. Each time with a different value. So basically you can update the values and you can do some, some small, small modifications too. Okay. So this is a small example. So assume that you need to print these values. You wrote in this way. Is it an optimal way? No. You can write the same thing within three lines. And these three lines can solve for thousand or you can write whatever the length might be. So for whatever length you can print them. Okay. Okay. So we are we will be going through these syntaxes and everything guys. Don't worry. Okay. So in this lecture we will be discussing mainly about four types of loops guys. Okay. So the first type is a for loop. The other type in for loop is nothing but for in or it is popularly called as for each loop guys. In most other programming languages they will be calling as for each loop for each loop. Okay. And similarly we will be talking about while loop do while loop. Okay. So basically now let us go through for loop first. So okay sorry for that. Okay. So basically for loop is having a syntax guys. So basically the syntax should be exactly the same or there should not be nothing inside it. Okay. So I'll be just going through it. So for of you need to have a statement here after that semicolon after statement after semicolon and close and here also you need a statement and you need to write some code here. So basically the first statement is nothing but initialization guys. So basically here you will be initializing the value like a equal to 1 or a equal to 0 or a equal to n in that way you will be initializing the value and in middle you will be checking the condition. So whether how many times you need to continue the loop a is less than 10 a is less than n a is greater than or equal to 10 in that way you will be checking for conditions. At the end you will be doing the operation of increment. So basically if you are checking for condition somewhere you need to increment the values inner or here or here. So basically all these three statements are not mandatory guys. So basically you might think that this is also this is mandatory you can just skip all the three statements also. Even by skipping them you can initialize it you can initialize this outside okay. To continue you can write this function you need you can write this if statement and you can write the question there and you can increment inside also. So basically even an empty for loop with only semicolons can also be run. Okay. So that's out of the point. So keep it aside for now. Okay. So we will be taking an example. So assume that you want to print the numbers. The number is 1. The number is 2. The number is 3. The number is 4. The number is 5. You want to print these numbers onto the screen. Okay. So you want to start from 0. Assume that you want to start from 0 to 4. Okay. So you will be writing a for loop. The initial value is 0. So 0. Is 0 less than 5? True. So it goes inside. So basically if you want me to draw the decision for this it will be in this way guys. So basically initially you will be initializing it here. Then you will be checking a condition. If the condition is true you will be executing the statements. And once the statements are done you will be incrementing it. Once incrementing is done you will be checking again. So this is the loop. And once the decision is false you will be just exiting out of the loop and you will be continuing the rest of the statements. Clear? Yes. Okay. So now let us go through for in or for each loop. So basically here you will be having an array right. So in array you will be reading each element right. So whenever you are using array instead of writing it in this way. This way is a bit complex right. So they came up with this small idea. 
so basically here what you are doing is nothing but you are assuming a variable x okay so you will be x in person so basically you will be checking whether x in person so in person what are the values are there you will be storing in x that is nothing but that might be the index guys please remember that might be the index or the value it depends on the programming language and you will be storing it and you can use it inside so this is nothing but for each or for in loop okay so now let us go through while loop okay so basically while loop and for loop are almost the same but in for loop you wrote, you wrote conditions inside the bracket right but in while loop you will be you, you wrote condition with the three things right the initialization increment and condition in while loop you will be writing only condition inside that's the only change okay so you can assume that both are equal also both are the same functionalities also okay so if you want to print the same 1 to 10 0, 0 or 1 to 10 numbers you will be initializing you will be initializing the value to 0 so you will be printing from 0 to 9 in this by using this loop okay so now let us go through do while so guys this do while is a bit different when compared to while and for loop so basically before performing the thing they both will check the condition guys yes yes but do while will not do it will first do the function then it will check that is the reason why it is called do while sorry here it should be while with brackets condition in this way right so do while the example for this you can do many things guys you can start with again i equal to 0 you need to initialize previously initialize it previously so test equal to the number is 1 or 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 until the condition the condition i think it's 10 until 10 so from 0 to 9 it will continue the process okay okay so i hope everyone got a small idea on these loops so now we are done with the basic loops guys so the two main conditions which you can use in loop are nothing but break and continue and continue right so break is nothing but whenever you are running a loop continuously at some point if you want to break based on the condition you are checking a condition it was false 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 finally it became a true and the condition after it is break so you will not end this loop here you will directly jump out of the loop you will be coming to the next statements so assume in this way you are having some statements so here i gave a for loop and i wrote a condition if the value of a for loop is greater than 100 i want to break it so it continues until it reaches 100 it will be inside the for loop once it crosses 100 it will automatically break out of the loop and the next statements will be executed okay i hope everyone got some basic idea okay similarly to the opposite of this continue continue is nothing but even after the condition breaks it continues in the loop so assume i equal to 0 i less than 10 i plus plus so at 3 we give continue so instead of breaking this loop it will be executing the below statement guys okay so continue will be continuing it so the continue statement breaks one iteration in the loop if a specified continue condition occurs and continues with the next iteration of the loop so basically it continues up with the next iteration of the loop okay so i hope everyone got some basic idea at least about this loops and these two break and continue okay so i hope everyone got some basic idea so in the next lecture we will be starting with the arrays in javascript guys so let us meet in the next tutorial thank you thanks for watching